Every year, approximately 300 patients are admitted to Murphy's Psychiatric Institute. Most of them suffer from severe cases of schizophrenia, depression, and other well-known mental disorders. However, from time to time, specialists from Murphy's Institute are confronted with yet undiscovered cases that become the object of scientific research. This was the case of young Peter, also known as Peter Vlogs 851, whose condition led to the discovery of one of the most dangerous mental disorders of the 21st century. Peter was a typical kid. He had a happy childhood. He was popular amongst his peers. As my only child, he meant the world to me. Laura Higgins is a single mother who lived happily with her son in the small town of Sanford, Maine. Things started to get worse after his 18th birthday. I got him a camera for his 18th birthday. He always dreamt of making videos and I thought, this would be the perfect gift for him. What seemed like an innocent present from a loving mother triggered a series of shocking events that nobody expected. Good morning! Yeah. Yo guys, I'm super excited today because I'm gonna go to my friend's house and we're gonna play some Xbox! Guys, guess what we have for breakfast today? Mmm, Nutella! Ah, oh, Nutella. Oh, I love Nutella. Yeah, what the oh. hell are you doing? Mom, stop interrupting me, I'm vlogging! Mind? No, I haven't! This is hilarious! People on the internet... He was doing it. all of these stupid things and pretending to be happy even though he wasn't. His life became like a fake show for a few thousand people on the internet and I really started to worry about him. Peter's behavior was changing fast. He often acted irrationally and came up with pointless scenarios. His condition was about to get worse. Not only did the daily vlogging worsen the relationship with his mother, it also impacted Peter's social life. It was an ordinary Friday in Sanford, Maine, when he crossed the line. I remember that day as if it was yesterday. It was my birthday, I had invited all my friends, including Peter, I had never expected him to do something like that. What am I gonna buy her? Chocolate or cosmetics? Guys, help me out and leave a comment down below. What do you think is a better present for Caitlyn? By the way, this is my favorite chocolate. I wish I had never invited him. He brought his camera and never turned it off. We had no privacy. He was so fake and overhyped. We couldn't believe that this was the Peter that we all liked. He was acting differently and there was something wrong with him and he completely ruined the entire party and that's when I knew that I had lost my best friend. None of Peter's friends knew exactly what was happening inside his head. However, they suspected there may be an underlying health issue causing him to act irrationally. After the party, they told Peter's mom that he should seek medical attention. They came at the right time. I wasn't sure if Peter's behavior was considered normal. I mean, there are hundreds of daily vloggers on the internet, but the concerns of his closest friends finally convinced me that it was time for Peter to see a doctor. The first stop was Maine Medical Center, where Peter visited his primary care physician, Dr. Richard Pounder. Physically, he appeared fine. His blood pressure and respiratory rate were normal. We found no traces of drugs in his urine, and there were no obvious signs of a physical problem. What concerned me, however, was that he was recording the entire examination. Sing vlog! Say hi to the camera, Dr. Pounder! Peter, 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 you're not allowed to film here. Oh, I'm not allowed to film here! Say that to the 5,000 people watching this vlog! Peter, can you please put the camera down? Woo! Blood pressure! Dab to dab! Peter, you, dab you need to stay oh, still! Peter, Peter. <laughs> Due to his unusual behavior, I decided to refer him to a neurologist, and I also suggested that he seeks out a new primary care doctor. Peter wasn't just going through a phase. These were the telltale symptoms of a much bigger problem inside his head. He was sent to Murphy Psychiatric Institute, where he met with Dr. Luca Moretti, a neuroscientist who specializes in rare brain diseases. 
In my 30 years of practice, I have never seen a case quite like Peter's. We conducted a series of tests, and when the results came in, I was shocked. I knew we were on the verge of a disturbing discovery. Persistent visual stimuli due to his constant vlogging caused an oversaturation of his occipital lobe, which somehow caused a majority of his supermarginal gyrus to disappear. This part of the brain is responsible for empathy, common sense, and emotional intelligence. In other words, Peter became an asshole. We began to examine more daily vloggers, and the symptoms were always the same. These people cannot distinguish what is interesting and uh, what is not. They think that everything in their life is uh, interesting, from going to the gym, to eating cereal, to going to the toilet. Apart from that, they show signs of aggression and lack of emotions while off camera, which may be considered as a severe bipolarism. The research of Dr. Moretti's team found an even more alarming fact about daily vloggers. The area around their occipital lobe was shrinking the more they vlogged, which meant that long-term daily vloggers had no brain at all. We were fully aware that this might be the most dangerous mental disorder we've ever encountered. But how does a regular person become a daily vlogger? To find the answer, we need to go back to the year 2016. In 2016, YouTube significantly changed their algorithms. It involved two major fundamental alterations in their system. Firstly, videos longer than 10 minutes got hugely promoted, as YouTube made more money playing more ads. Secondly, YouTube started to promote channels that constantly upload new content, again, for financial reasons. These two modifications set the foundation for a new type of content. Daily vlogs took over the entire platform. At that time, a lot of channels had been struggling with views. Vine got cancelled and suddenly had this exciting new type of content that in most cases didn't require any creativity or effort and could potentially make a lot of money. That's why many people, especially those with no talent, started daily vlogging. By the end of 2017, there were thousands of daily vloggers. Peter, basically the patient zero of daily vlogging, was our initial hope. We immediately started with an alternative treatment. The unconventional therapy methods involved taking away Peter's camera and admitting him into Murphy Psychiatric Institute. It was the most difficult time of my life. I was crying every single day. I knew he was suffering so much. The treatment wasn't working. He became even more aggressive and threatened to kill himself in his next vlog. We opted for a drastic solution, brain surgery. The idea was to place the supermarginal gyrus of a donor inside Peter's brain and fill the blank space damaged by daily vlogging. Initial setbacks with finding a donor forced doctors to appeal to Peter's fan community. The brain donor was found within hours, and it was time for one of the riskiest surgeries in the history of medicine. Peter's surgery lasted 820 hours, and it was a stunning success. He recovered surprisingly fast, and today he lives as a healthy young man. Uh, I like candy and I like uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> Unfortunately, we weren't able to find an auto donor. The clock was ticking, and uh, his oldest subscriber, six-year-old Matthew Reynolds, offered to donate his brain with the permission of his parents. We had no other option. I couldn't be happier. Peter may be mentally challenged now, but at least he's not daily vlogging anymore. So what are the prospects of finding a cure and putting a stop to daily vlogging in order to prevent pandemic? With the latest ad policy updates that permit only the monetization of family-friendly videos, I'm concerned that daily vlogging may become even more popular, as it's the definition of vague, politically correct content with no value. I fear that, without a cure, we may be plummeting into a world of darkness and stupidity. Even though research is still preliminary at this point, I'm confident that we will find a cure for daily blogging. But this leads us to a more disturbing question, and perhaps an even more comprehensive study. 
What about the people watching these vlogs?